cybersecurity in the spotlight, especially after this week's massive cyber attack that affected 150 countries. So we're now joined in studio by Arthur Goldstock from Worldwide Works, who watches these kinds of things with keen interest. All right, so let's start with, with, with this, um, what's it called, WannaCry ransomware. Most of South Africans didn't get affected, so they have no idea actually what happened. Take us through what this event is. Good evening, Peter. Essentially what happened was that the ransomware first infected computers in Europe. And the way it works is that someone clicks on a link that appears to go to an interesting site or an attachment that is supposedly um, related to their business. But in fact is the virus that is then installed on their computer and then demands a ransom that has to be paid in a virtual currency to an address or on a website that is given uh, to the person whose computer is, uh, is infected. Now that's been happening for mm. quite some years already. It's a well-known exploit of uh, hackers. But what happened on this occasion is that they used a vulnerability in Windows that was exposed in uh, March. Hackers got into the American um, NSA, National Security Agency uh, systems and were able to um, extract and, and publish uh, online a, a guide to the vulnerabilities in Windows as well as a tool to exploit mm -hmm. one of those vulnerabilities which involves file sharing. And the moment you have a file sharing vulnerability you can also share viruses across networks and that's essentially what mm -hmm. happened. This virus got shared across networks and eventually infected hospitals across the United Kingdom, police stations in Europe and even the uh, German railway system wow. in terms of their messaging boards. Alright, so let's just follow this a little bit. So what you're saying is Microsoft had a weakness in its software. The NSA in America logged that weakness in its files, didn't tell Microsoft that, listen, you've got a problem with your software, and then these hackers then went into the NSA files and saw this weakness and exposed it and used it to their end. So the question might be, why didn't the NSA tell Microsoft? Well, the NSA uses these loopholes or backdoors. In fact, they would like to have backdoors into every system. They use these vulnerabilities to themselves uh, conduct surveillance on uh, computers, on um, even companies I suppose, but certainly on uh, governments and other targets. So they wanted to keep those loopholes or those uh, weaknesses open so that they themselves could exploit it. Unfortunately the tool that they were using to exploit it was then um, obtained by the hackers. Mm. So th that's the problem when you create a very powerful I mean tool. It's, it's it gets into the wrong hands. If, if the NSA can be hacked. So, um, any damage to South Africa? There was a, an interactive map published by the New York Times on Saturday that showed the uh, progress of the attacks. And on this you could see worldwide the attacks as they were happening. You couldn't see who was being attacked, mm. but you could see where it was happening and every single city in South Africa had victims. There were companies or networks in all major cities that were continually being attacked by this. So you can be sure that many, especially small businesses, were victims of this uh, ransom attack. We haven't yet heard of big companies or public entities, otherwise the public would have been inconvenienced by their systems going down. Right. But we may well still see that. So um, I'm told that uh, Marcus Hutchins from his bedroom managed to kill this ransomware by a lucky break, a lucky accident. Tell us what happened. It's a, a very short-lived accident but <laughs> essentially what he found in the software itself was a, a website address that the software or the virus had to communicate with um, continually. It's, it's, it's part of programming language where you sometimes have the, uh, the, the, pr the program communicating with a website and the instruction that was built into the software was that if it found this website it would then stop the virus. It would stop the program from uh, being activated or from executing and essentially this website didn't exist so the virus could never find it so it carried on spreading until he spotted this and created or registered the website or registered that non-existent address as a website to see what would happen. He just wanted to monitor it and count the number of attacks. Inadvertently what he did <laughs> was he created, uh, you, you could say, um, the, the, the kill notice 
for the virus and it stopped the virus in its tracks. But what that means is that anyone can simply adapt that virus, build in a website address that uh, does exist, but also instruct the virus not to stop when it finds that uh, website address. And in that way, new versions of the ransomware will suddenly start spreading and won't be stopped as easily. So what we're seeing is, you know, we, we, we talk about the fourth industrial revolution all the time now, and it, it just means that uh, <coughs> the bad guys are coming up with bigger and better toys that can do bigger and better damage, inverted commas. What do we do at home? You know, how can we protect ourselves? I mean, if the NHS, National Health S System in, in the UK, is collapsed, um, by some hackers. What, what chance do I have, Peter and Dora at home on this computer? Well, what we saw at work there was incompetence and uh, mismanagement. So if we're aware of the problems, and the problem is that very few people are aware of these threats, if we are aware and we understand the precautions that need to be taken, then we are 99% safer. There's always uh, those clever exploits that will uh, get to us. You and I, knowing everything, could still be uh, victims of hackers uh, because they've found the next mm. step or the next clever uh, move. But essentially what it boils down to is in terms of viruses on your computer or in terms of uh, ransomware, is never click on a link um, that is sent to you by an anonymous person or someone you don't know or from a suspicious seeming source or address and never open an attachment that you don't know what is mm. in it. So many people still send attachments saying PC attached. Now when I get that I simply don't open it. I see it a lot from schools funny enough. They haven't, strangely, they're mm. teaching our children how to read, write and communicate, but they haven't learned how to communicate with parents. So mm. schools will send out notices to parents saying, um, PC attached. After this ransomware attack, I think a high proportion of those emails are never going to be opened. I wouldn't open them because that's exactly what a lot of these suspicious looking so emails So what you're saying like. is that most of the time, it requires an action on our part to activate this. It's not Precisely. just a question of switching on the computer. Precisely. There is one other uh, exploit that is used, mm -hmm. and it usually works with older people who are nervous about technology. Someone actually phones. They phone randomly, and mm -hmm. they get a person on the other side, and they say, um, we from Microsoft, yeah. this, this has been happening for about four years now, we from Microsoft, and we've detected a virus on your computer. Now, any sensible person will realize Microsoft yeah. isn't going to phone them, <laughs> but people lose all uh, sense, sense of logic <laughs> when it comes to technology, mm -hmm. and then they fall for it. They get led to a website where they are told to download a piece of software, activate the software on their computer, and then suddenly they have ransomware. Yeah. And exactly the same situation as the hospitals in the UK are facing right now is what mm -hmm. individuals in South Africa have been getting for years. Yeah, that's happened to me a couple of times. And usually I, I say, I'm a police officer. Can I call you back? What's your number? <laughs> and their phone, their phone just disappears straight away. <laughs> All right, so don't open attachments. Don't click things that you're un unaware of. And I suppose also when your um, uh, program people say, update your software, for goodness sake, update it. That's a fundamental rule. And in business and on on. Uh, networks and for administrators of networks that's absolutely critical mm. is keep the software updated keep antivirus software updated and when there's a new patch released install that patch there are also tools you can get online incidentally to protect you from ransomware as a business and there are also sites where individuals can go to uh, find tools to unlock their systems if they have fallen victim to ransomware um, in the past so we've run out of time, but I think there's also a, a myth that you need to debunk that um, Apple devices can't be hacked or, or do not, not susceptible to viruses. That's not true, is it? It's wishful thinking. It used to be the case because there were so much fewer Apple uh, computers out there, mm -hmm. so uh, hackers go for the mass market. They don't go for the niche. Apple is no longer a niche, so they're m just as much a victim of uh, viruses and malware. All right, Arthur Goldstock, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much Thanks for your advice and uh, your insights. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue with more news. Don't go away.